favorite. You guys, there's boxes. You know what that means. We're moving. Well, not us per se. You're staying with your roommates. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the studio. As you can tell, I'm moving. We're just gonna be packing up all week, but I thought it'd be a shame if I just packed up and said deuces. I actually really, really loved this apartment. Like this corner unit with windows on both sides, facing the west, facing the mountains. It was the best first apartment that I could have asked for, and I'm really gonna miss it. Anyway, enough of the cheesiness. A lot of you guys ask me for a studio tour or what's a supplies you need to start sculpting with polymer clay and while I'm packing everything into boxes and while I'm moving out I thought this would be a great time to just show you all the art supplies that I own which ones I actually use which ones I don't use that often and yeah it'll just be a little twist on the typical moving out vlog take a good look at this studio because this is gonna be probably the last video I make with her I think I'm gonna start off with the heart of the studio, which is my desk. A pro cleaning tip that I once heard was to start off with the biggest part of your room. So if it's your bedroom, make your bed first because it takes up most of the space. And if the bed is clean, then you'll feel more accomplished and more motivated to go on with the rest of your things. So this is the Flexi Spot standing desk. I actually have two of them. So this is the one that I bought with my own money. And then I have one over there. And that is a desk that I was gifted for a sponsorship. So as you can tell, I'm a flexi spot girly. Be warned, if you get a standing desk, I highly recommend either like a cushioned mat for you to stand on so your feet don't hurt or get yourself a pair of cloud slippers like these. Um, I'm going to put these up on my Amazon storefront. It's going to be under my cozy home studio tab. So look at that if you're wondering about any of my supplies. So I feel like this area is the star of the show in most of my videos. I purposefully got a really big and deep desk so I could fit a ton of things in the back and still have ample space up front to sculpt my characters, work on my art, edit my videos without feeling like I didn't have enough space. And I'll show you what I mean by like a deep desk. So this desk... Twenty nine and a half inches wide. So that means I can have this huge shelf, my computer and everything tucked nicely. And then this is my beautiful computer. It's the 24 inch green iMac 2020 model, I wanna say. I think I got this specifically for design school back when I was in university. I needed a computer to help render my 3D animations. I've had it for a couple years and I love it. And now I use it to do all my work, render my YouTube videos and everything, it's great. And this is my keyboard of choice. She is a mechanical keyboard. She's a little dirty, so please don't mind the dust and the dirt. And as you guys can see, I love plants. I'm a huge pothos fan because pothos are just so good at staying alive. You really don't have to do much to take care of them. I just water them once a week, sometimes once every two weeks if I'm really busy. This one up here is my oldest child. She's a lot longer than what you guys can see. She's actually been wrapping around my bookshelf here and she goes all the way down. Thank you, Constant Contact, for sponsoring this video. As you guys know, I've been running my small art business for around three years now, putting all my energy into social media and content creating, but now that it's 2023, I think it's time for me to work smarter and not harder. Especially when it comes to marketing, one hugely underrated method is actually email newsletters, and with Constant Contact, you can create emails that stand out on any device with their easy-to-use email editor and hundreds of pre-designed templates. And they help you automate your email so you can send the right message at the right time depending on your preferences. And let's say you have writer's block. Constant Contact's new AI content generator automates the writing process for you and creates engaging content in seconds. To me, this is the best part because sometimes the only thing more difficult than actually running a business is thinking of the right words to market it. And from there, you can post to all of your different social media accounts with just one click. So it's actually made to help us grow and give us time time to do the things that we actually love to do. So if you want to start your free risk-free trial today, use promo code UNCOMFY for 30% off your first three months as a paying subscriber. Just click the link in the description below to get started with this offer. And now back to the vlog. When I was initially planning the layout of my studio, I really wanted to give my plants some height. So at the time I was still living at my parents' house and they made this little wooden riser for me, which was so, so nice of them. It's really heavy actually. I tend to tuck away 
some of my clay supplies here because it's easy access. So this is probably the one thing that I reach for the most in this shelf. So here's a little tour of the clay supplies I use the most. These are the five tools I think are quintessential to Palmer clay sculpting. And whenever I'm sculpting on the go, if I'm going out on a picnic or if I'm going to sculpt in a cafe, these are the things I would bring. So my needle point tool, an exacto knife to portion out the clay and then various sizes of dotting tools i have a small one for small charms and then big ones for bigger charms pretty self-explanatory but these are super super important in my business and ironically these are probably one of the least expensive things you can buy on amazon i also have these really cheap craft smart brushes that are super super dirty but the bristles are soft and i like that because i use these type of brushes to shade with pastels if you want to level up your your Palmer clay game. Shading with chalk pastels is one of the easiest ways to do that. And these are some silicone brushes that I got recently. I glaze all my pieces with UV resin and I've been using flat brushes like this, but over time, even if I try to clean it super well with rubbing alcohol, the resin will harden on the bristles. I'm gonna try these silicone things as you guys suggested. I think these ends will be probably the most useful. I also got a little palette knife because I wanna try doing some realistic pastry stuff and I've seen some people use actual palette palette knives to spread the butter on the play toast and it's so cute yeah you'll see and then lastly here are just some various other tools that I use for texturing things sometimes I use them for painting too I don't reach for these often but when I do I'm really glad I have them and then I also have this metal tool thing that has just a lot of tiny metal bristles and I use that to create things like grass on my cottage core desk friends in here, I also have some other miscellaneous things like my cute little pink calculator. It makes adding things up so much less tedious. Tape measure because I always end up needing this for some reason. My uncomfy stamp. I use this to stamp all my packages that I ship out. Another jar just full of hand files. These are just nail files, but I use them to file down imperfections on my white clay. And then this is super cute. I have all my Posca pens and this sad dandelion. Poscas are really useful for adding details like stars on my wizard hat, sprinkles on my frog cakes, and just small things like that. And I also have a big bottle of rubbing alcohol on hand at all times. It's super useful for cleaning Palmer clay. I've talked about this many, many times, but you use a Q-tip dipped in rubbing alcohol to rub away dust and dirt on your Palmer clay. It works like magic. On this end, I have a little tub of Q-tips, jar full of my favorite pens and pencils, then all my memo pads and planners and notebooks and such. This is like my favorite memo from Katie Mai. It's so cute and green and everything that I love. And this is the planner that I use right now. It's the Hobonichi Weekly because I like having a weekly setup. And it has cute little quotes on the bottom of each week. Tulip pens that I got from Portland and they write so well. Phantom Maxine. Tea frog. Oh, and I forgot to mention this, but I also have two lamps on the side here. It got a little cloudy, so you might be able to tell, but yeah, I call this my Pixar lamp because it's the same shape as the Pixar lamp. <laughs> And then this one is really cool. It's a magnifying glass, but I also use it as a lamp. Um, I got this for Christmas last year from one of my good friends. It has a warmer toned light, which I really do love. It might seem so extra, but when I'm working at night, it's really hard to see what color I'm working with if it's just with the white light. So I like to use this to sort of balance it out, give it some warmth, give it like the natural sunlight that I'm looking for. And I also have another lamp right here. Um, and if there's anything that I've learned running my business, being a full-time artist for the past three years is that light is so so important so that is why i have not one not two but three lamps plugged in under this desk okay so before i start packing everything on my desk i'm gonna do a speed run of this shelf here because i want to pack everything together so this is my beautiful bamboo shelf that i got on amazon i think it was about a hundred dollars and it's a little over five feet tall i remember buying this shelf when i first moved into this apartment and i feel like it really elevated my space not only does it match my desk but it like expanded my studio space so much it made it look a lot bigger than it is it made storing things look really cute and also i was able 
able to put more plants up here too. Here I have my thermal label printer. I got the Rolo brand because she's good, she's reliable, but the one thing I wish I waited for was to get a wireless thermal label printer because this girl, so many wires, you have to like power her and you also have to connect her to your computer via USB. Definitely get a wireless version, it's worth the money because it'll just save you the pain of having to organize all your wires. And the other nice thing about it is that you'll be able to connect to multiple devices. I mean, honestly, it's such a first world problem. I'm gonna move this guy up here. Plastic storage case. I use this for stickers when I have a lot of stickers on hand. More storage. This is my favorite brand of glue tape. I use it to attach stickers to my thank you cards. And these are the refills. I think anything refillable is a lot better than buying new ones and then having to throw these away because I don't think these are refillable. And then here is a crate for all my miscellaneous um, camera equipment, cords, USB-C cords, tripods, everything in there. Typically in this space, I'll have a ton of bubble mailers to fill the space, but I actually ran out of bubble mailers and then I went on a break. So here are the chalk pastels that I use. And then here I just have a shit ton of tubes of paint. And most of these I got from my friend as well. And these ones were gifted to me actually. So I didn't pay for any of this paint. Lastly, I have a huge tub of all my packing supplies, but right now it's just a ton of festival tabling stuff. And usually I have my clay pasta roller sitting here. So I don't know why I was on the floor, but yeah, this was like $30 at Michael's. I highly recommend getting a clay pasta roll. Not only does it roll clay out super fun evenly, but it makes mixing colors so much faster than mixing by hand. I can't believe I almost forgot to show you guys my rolly cart. This guy is also an integral part of my studio. My glass slate. I got this from my parents' basement and I think it's like the best surface for sculpting ever. Both polymer clay, air dry clay, anything you're sculpting or modeling. Glass is super easy to clean off and it protects your wooden surfaces. I honestly don't know what this was first used for. I think it was part of like a coffee table or something. But if you're looking for a glass surface like this, I would suggest looking at thrift stores or consignment shops. A lot of oil painters love using glass palettes so definitely search up a glass paint mixing palette on Amazon or get a thrift store, find a gigantic picture frame and take the glass out from that. Make sure you cover the edges thoroughly with masking tape so you don't get cut though. Also in this cart is my big storage bin. I got it from Michael's. I think it was $18, but these go on sale all the time as well. Down here on the second level, I have even more clay. You definitely do not need all of these colors. And on this last level, I have my UV lamp underneath it is my UV gloves, nitrile gloves, my respirator, super, super important, and of course the charger for the lamp. Just a reminder, all of these will be listed in my Amazon link below. And speaking of resin, over here, we have another shelf with supplies that I use a lot, and this is the resin that I use. This resin is my all-time favorite and I've tried many, many different brands and I've learned the hard way that some resins yellow over time really, really fast. So this one is the only one that I've tested that doesn't turn yellow after like a year. And I've seen other creators use this one as well. Okay, now that we've covered everything I have on this side of the studio, I'm gonna start packing it up now. Rusty red on her shoulder, I was cleaning her shoes. Mr. Uncomfy got when home and now he's organizing the all my clay for me. There's a messy one in a relationship and then there's an organized one. We brushed and we braided dandelions and chewed. It was a mutual arrangement we both saw in two. Can she walk in the fire? Can she run in the rain? Can she make it up the mountainside? Can she make it down? 